I tell a few stories about a lawyer back home called No Ty Hawkins, and I've been requested to tell a story or two about uh, No Ty. Some of you don't know much about uh, No Ty, but he's uh, quite a character. He's a lawyer in a small community in North Alabama in the Hill Country, and uh, he, uh, over the years, has uh, developed the nickname of No Ty. His real name is James Hawkins, and because of the fact that he never wears a necktie, he's known familiarly as No Tie. He will go to court never with a necktie on. He argues his case before the jury never with a necktie on, and he's quite a character there. And so uh, he uh, has been very effective over the years, particularly in regards to trying cases. He's what we call in Alabama an ear lawyer rather than an eye lawyer. He rather depends on what he hears the law might be, but uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, no tie finally lost a case. He's won most of them, and so he had to take an appeal to the Supreme Court of Alabama, and that was when I was on the court, and so uh, all of his friends said, now, no tie, you better wear a necktie when you go down there and argue before the Supreme Court of Alabama. He says, no, says, I don't think so, says, uh, I'm sort of superstitious about this, says, I've had a lot of success never wearing a necktie, and I, it might hex me or cause me some problems, and says, I just don't want to gamble on it. So he came down, and he argued his case before the Supreme Court. Uh, a few of my more dignified colleagues gave him a few hard looks, but nobody said anything to him about the fact that he didn't have a necktie on. Well, after he argued his case, he went back home. In a few weeks, he received the opinion and he saw that he lost his case. He ran into me a, a few days after that. He says, all my friends tell me the reason I lost my case was because I didn't wear a necktie. And I tried to assure him that the Supreme Court of Alabama would never let an extraneous matter like that creep into any of its uh, opinions, but that didn't seem to satisfy him. He said, well, I want to tell you this. He says, if that had been the reason, it would have been a damn sight better than the one you gave. <laughs> Well, up in that hill country where you live close to Vine, Alabama, Vine, Alabama is a community of 68 people. It's not very big. Uh, but uh, anyway, he out there one time, there were a group of nuns that were traveling through the countryside, and they got lost out on a country road out in that area. And so, lo and behold, they gave out a gas, and they didn't know what they were going to do. And so one of them saw around the curve in the road a filling station, and so they went up there and they said, we out of gas, could we borrow a gas can and carry some gasoline back to the automobile and we'll return the gas can, buy gas and be on our way. Well, they looked around and they couldn't find a gas can. All the people who had been uh, borrowing gas cans had failed to return them. And so uh, they hunted for some sort of container to carry some gas back to the car in. And the only container that they could find was an old bed pan. So they filled up the old bedpan full of gasoline and they went back to the car. And here one of the nuns in her, her robes was pouring the gasoline from the bedpan into the tank of the automobile. When down the road driving his 1970 Ford automobile comes no time. And he sees what's going on and he comes to a stop. He says, now I'm gonna watch this. <laughs> says, if that car cranks or runs, says, I'm a trading cars and switching churches. <laughs> <laughs> well, no time finally became a judge and uh, <laughs> he had problems uh, ruling on objections, you know, things that he didn't know whether to sustain them or uh, to overrule him, and finally he developed him a system. He got him a deck of cards, and he'd sit up there at his uh, real, real dignified manner with no necktie on, and, and they'd be trying a case, and the lawyer would enter an objection. He'd take the deck of cards and just reach down and cut them. 
if it came up a black suit, a spade, or a club, he'd overrule the objection. If it was a heart or a diamond, he'd sustain the objection. Well, this just didn't, people said, the Bar Association, this can't continue, says we can't allow that to happen. So they appointed a committee from the Bar Association to go see him, and they told him, says, now, you're going to have to start ruling according to the law and study and rule correctly, or otherwise, says, we're going to have to report you to the Alabama Judicial Inquiry Commission. Oh, he says, don't do that, says, I'll study. And thereafter, for six months, he worked like everything, read, studied, did the best he could, and he would rule in the way that he thought the law was. After six months of doing that, the Bar Associations Committee returned to see him and presented him with a, a new deck of cards. 